Okay, so uh, we've introduced ourselves to the uh, rate equations, uh, and what we're going to do over the next couple of days is uh, expand how to use those rate equations in more complex uh, situations that we can still define as one-dimensional. And the way we're going to start that is to think about heat transfer as a flow. Um, there are some really important fundamental laws in physics that take the form of a flow equation. And, and that form fits this format right here, where whatever it is that's flowing is going to be equal to what's forcing that movement uh, divided by what's resisting that movement. So a driving force uh, divided by a resistance. Uh, and let's look at a couple of those fundamental equations just so we can see how that kind of works. The one that you may be most familiar with is Ohm's law, right? Ohm's law is about how the flow of electrons, our current, uh, the thing that's pushing those electrons through a circuit is a delta V, uh, the, a difference in voltage, um, which drives those electrons. And the thing that keeps them from flowing too fast is the resistance. Uh, so if I have a large voltage and a small resistance, I'll get a large flow. Uh, if I have a small driving force uh, and a large resistance, I'll get a small flow. We see a very similar equation in what's called Fick's Law, which you may not have run into uh, unless you've taken some chemistry classes, uh, which describes how concentrations of mass change over time. So if I have uh, some salt water that's next to some fresh water, Fick's Law tells us how that salt moves from uh, the salt water into that fresh water. Uh, and so the driving force here is a difference in concentration. If I have a really salty water next to uh, fresh water, it's gonna, there's gonna be a larger driving force here. And our, uh, our resistance is defined by some of the physical situation, right? How far apart uh, the two concentrations are, how much contact they have with each other, and then a diffusion coefficient that describes some of the molecular uh, interactions between, in this case, salt and fresh water and um, uh, some of the things that are particular to that uh, physical situation. And finally, we could look at Poiseuille's law, which you've seen uh, in your fluids class, which in which describes the flow of uh, a liquid through a pipe uh, with laminar flow. Uh, the driving force here is pressure, and the resistance has to do again with the length of the pipe, uh, with the cross-sectional area of the pipe, and the viscosity of that uh, of that liquid. And so, all three of these fit this format of flow being equal to a driving force divided by something that's resisting that force. Why does that matter to us? Well, it matters to us because heat transfer rate equations fit that same format. So when we look at the conduction rate equation here, uh, we can rewrite that rate equation in flow terms where our resistance has to do with the distance between the two temperatures uh, the area of contact between those uh, two materials or two temperatures uh, and our conductivity coefficient K. Okay, for convection, we can do the same thing in terms of turning that into a flow equation. Our convection rate equation becomes Q over delta T divided by R driving force divided by resistance. But here our R is defined by our convective conditions, uh, how much area of contact uh, between our fluid and our surface and our convection coefficient. What's the advantage of restating these or reparameterizing these equations as a flow equation? Well, it helps us see a parallel to Ohm's law uh, and this is going to allow us to solve more complex one-dimensional problems because we can start to think of um, physical heat uh, situations as resistance networks in the same way we would with the circuit. And here this you know, <laughs> the little yellow guy tells us we can 
you know, flow describes all sorts of uh, different equations. This is a really useful conceptual way of an imagining a physical situation, uh, including uh, how many M&Ms uh, this little guy is going to eat.